Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we're going to be working through another one of the quilts in my book, Simple Quilts for the Modern Home. And this one, I've got to say, is probably one of my favorites for like actually using in my home. It's the one that I am going to be putting on my bed now that I've redone my bedroom in colors that I love now as opposed to colors that I loved when I moved into this house 10 years ago. And I am just, I love all the neutral grays that, that it worked with and, and how it turned out. And this one's called Bricks and Pavers and it is almost entirely strip piece, which makes it go really quickly because even though we're working with a lot of small pieces, it really, you're gonna sew it all together first and then cut it apart so it goes really fast. Now the original fabric that I used to do this is no longer available. Um, you can check out Shell Rummel. We do have some of her more recent lines um, in our shop, but the one that I felt was truest to the original colorway is actually um, newsprint by Cotton and Steel. And so that one is what I'm using for this one here today. And we are gonna have kits while supplies last. I, we don't have too much of this left, and I know that we have the very last that is available of one of the prints. So when it's gone, it's gone. Um, but I really like this. I, I like how it kind of turned out and it's really, really cute. And like I said, this is one of my personal favorites. It's gonna be going on my bed very soon. Let's get started. So of course you can do this in any color way that you want, but I've chosen lots of neutrals for this. And what I did is I kind of arranged it so that it's going from lightest to darkest in the way that this works. And that way it's gonna have this real cool sort of undulating color as it goes back and forth. And what is going to draw your eye around is your use of color value rather than the prints that are going in any particular piece. So this is the first set of three that I'm going to sew together. You're gonna to sew together four sets of three um, long wide strips. And I just cut this um, from some scraps we had in the shop. And so it's not a full width of fabric here for the demo, but at home you're gonna be using a full width of fabric. And by the way, all the measurements and the cutting instructions and what value and what quantities you need for this are available in the book, Simple Quilts for the Modern Home. You can get a signed copy from on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to sew this into a set of three using a quarter inch seam. All right, I got my first two together. Now I'm going to join it to my lightest color, which is gonna be on the outside. Now I'm gonna press my seams open. I do that by opening up those seams with my fingertips and then I put at least three fingers down on the seam ahead of the iron. And that kind of helps open that seam and finger press it so that I can put the tip of the iron straight down the center and just kind of go right along that. And you should have a nice straight seam. You shouldn't see any wiggles. If you see a wiggle, that means there's a pleat on the other side and that is not good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side here and then we're gonna press from the other side to make sure it's good and flat. And I like to press my seams open because I find that it makes for a really flat quilt construction and gives you a lot more options when it comes to the actual quilting part because you can really get right into where that seam join is. And also, um, I do reduce my stitch length to about 2.0 when I'm stitching um, rather than the 2.5, just because it is, you know, it's pressed open, it's not put over, but I've never had any issues with like that seam popping open or having any problems like that with wear and tear. So it is, it's a pretty sturdy straight, uh, seam. I obviously sew a lot, make a lot of quilts and I haven't had any issues. So one of the reasons when I was planning the construction of this quilt that we sew it into sets of three instead of sets of four is that I'm able to fit an entire width of the ruler across the entire set of three. And so that way I'm able to then just cut straight across this to get my strip sets out of it. I'm just trying to show you how it works over here. And all I do, I'm not gonna actually cut it on camera because we want you to get that measurement from the book. Uh, if, you would, if you enjoy these videos, that's a great way to support us by getting the book if there's something you want to make from this. But what I'm doing is I'm just lining up an inch line, it doesn't matter which one, just any inch line with the seam allowance and that will ensure that you've got a nice square piece that you're working with. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut across and get as many strip sets as I can out of this 
uh, set and then we will be ready to start assembling our rows. So this is really, really fast. I did a couple of rows uh, yesterday while I was prepping for this video, probably within um, half an hour, I'm pretty much ready to sew together my first set of rows. And it just goes super, super fast. Even though it is one of the larger quilts in the book, you can get it done really quickly. All right, so you can see I've got my strip set unit cut from that and that worked super fast. I was able to just get that ready to go. And then I've already sewn the rest of my row together. So here's a set of three, here's a set of three, and then lastly, here is the last set of three. And so I've got that already sewn together. I'm gonna go ahead and add this on the end to complete the interior of my row. The interior of all your rows are gonna be the same, and then we're gonna add some different measurement bits on the sides to help create that uh, sort of wavy motion of the quilt. So for right now, I'm just gonna sew these guys together. I just use a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just gonna strip piece those together. I did that as I was sewing these guys together or chain piece rather, not strip piece. We've already done that. And that way it just goes super, super fast. You can sort of sew your two sets of two together and then sew your row halves together. And it just goes so fast in this quilt. I can't say it enough, it's big. It will fit your queen or king size bed, but it's, it is super, super fast. One of the faster ones in the book to complete. All right, so go ahead and get these guys right sides together. I don't pin this um, because you really are just sewing the end of a small rectangle next to the end of another small rectangle. So if you've been sewing for any length of time, that should be no big deal, but you can always pin if you feel like you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and chain piece the rest of those together now. So just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and press all these seams open, first from one side, and then go ahead and hit it from the right side just to get it really good and flat. So all of your row centers are going to be the same that we made from those strip piece units and then sewing them together to create your rows. Now the outside where you get that variation and that kind of undulation is going to be from having staggered bits that go on the outside. And the book explains very clearly what sizes these are and what needs to be on each end. And so there's a nice layout diagram. It shows you exactly what it is, but essentially this is the look we are going for. It's just going to repeat this staggering in and out throughout the width of the quilt. And it's really gonna create a nice visual movement from what is otherwise a really easy quilt to put together. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew these to the ends of the bits that I've already done. And then we're gonna put our rows together and I'll show you how I keep everything kind of lined up. As always, I'm gonna press that seam open and then we're going to get these rows sewn together. So since this strip set is super wide, it is just as wide as your entire bed quilt is going to be when it's done. I'm gonna show you a real easy way to segment that into halves and quarters so you have some guidelines to pin by to make sure that everything is nice and evenly pinned throughout your rows. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is fold this in half along the width. And I'm just going to really evenly kind of work my way down to get to the center of that row. All right, now when I get to the center, ideally these seams should be right on top of each other and they are, so that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this with the iron to get a nice crease so that I have something to pin to for the next row. So I'm going to unfold that and now I'm going to match the ends with that center. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in and put that nice and even with that crease that we just made. And then I'm going to go ahead and again, give it a pull, go all the way down and we're good to go. Go ahead and give that a press. 
And I suppose I probably should tell you that it's not always going to be dead center because of that undulation that we have. It might be a little offset. So just find the center of your row and we're going to just find from there our quarters. Right, so we're in line there. Go ahead and give it a pull down and press. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with all of my other rows so that way I've got nice guides to pin to. If you can think about it, the other one we folded it in on itself so that the wrong side was facing up. So if you take the next one, so like your even rows, and you fold it so that the print is on the outside, then those creases will actually kind of butt into each other and make it really easy to pin. All right, so in this case, the center is actually right on the seam. So that's nice and easy. I'll actually just put a pin in so that I know that this is my center seam. We'll just fold that in again and bring it over. Give it a little press for the quarter and then do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now I can pin these together really easily. Of course, it's real easy to match up your edges. Just flip those guys right sides together and put a pin in. Then if we come down a little further, I can tell right here and here it's where I pressed and one is concave and one is convex, which is nice. They're just gonna fit right into each other. So I'm gonna put a little pin in there where I mark that with my iron. And now I can really easily segment this a little bit further. So I can put a couple more pins in and know that I'm not going to be stretching anything out and that everything is going to be pinned very easily, evenly across the entire strip. All right, so now I'm gonna find my center. And again, I marked that center seam with a pin. And so I'm just gonna put the press mark for the center right over that seam. And then go ahead and put my seam in or my pin in and then do the same thing. Just make a couple of pins in between to so that it's nice and evenly pinned. I'm going to keep doing this down the length of the strip and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other two sets of rows and then we're going to sew this guy together. So I've gotten everything pinned together and now we've got to sew some very, very long seams. And if you want, you can do, you know, all of these at once and just have a whole bunch of them, as many as you can have pins for ready to go. You don't have to do it piece by piece like I'm doing here on the video. I'm just making one because I've already made the whole quilt. And so we're just doing what you need to know to do this at home. As always, I'm gonna press the seam open as well. The one difference is instead of just going straight down, when I come to one of the seams, I'm gonna physically lift the iron and set it back down. That way I don't accidentally flip one of these seams going the wrong way. And one of the reasons why I really, really like pressing long rows like this open as opposed to, to the side is if you've ever had a strip piece where you're piecing it and you're pressing it and it starts to kind of move up, that's manipulation from the iron manipulating what is otherwise straight fabric. And so this way you're gonna have nice straight rows as opposed to things that are kind of curving up because you're just pushing on it with the iron and the fabric is being manipulated in a way you don't want it to. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and press all the way down on that side and then when I'm done, also hit it from this side. And again, just make sure you're watching out to make sure there's no wiggles, that you just have nice straight seams here with no pleats. So for this next section, there's another way to line it up without having to do the pressing. Since we're gonna be joining sets of two together, these seams are gonna line up with the odd rows. So they're always gonna line up right on top of each other. So when you flip this over, what you can do is you can kind of take a peek and you can even use a pin if that makes it easier for you to get everything together. And I can just put a pin in up here to kind of see where it is. That's where my seam is. 
and then I can get it lined up so that this is roughly right and nice and even with that. And if it's off just the teeniest bit, no one's ever really gonna know. Um, but it's just a nice little guide for that. Go ahead and put a pin in on the corner here. So then I can come up a little bit more. All right, so I see my seam underneath and I can see that it's lined up nicely with the seam down there. And as an eyeball, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pin in and I'm gonna keep on doing that wherever there is a seam on the bottom all the way through until I have my entire set of four pinned together. Then we're gonna sew it, press it, and then you know everything you need to know in order to make this quilt. All right, so I've got my set of four together. You're gonna make a whole bunch of these and sew them together to get your quilt top. I just wanna kind of give you a preview of what this looks like. You can see that the colors just kind of undulate into one another and it sort of gets darker towards the center and then gets lighter again and then you've got your lightest pieces on the outside again. We'll put some photos in of what the original looks like so you can see the whole quilt and also I've done up a digital image of what it will look like with these fabrics. So if you wanna get a kit, you can. Otherwise, you definitely can use your own fabric with this and you don't have to go with the neutrals like I did. You could definitely do this with a rainbow and make it really bright and funky as well. Um, I think Tulip Pink would make a really fun, bright version of this quilt if you kind of had the rainbow undulating across, that'd be really fun. But neutrals are super in now and it's a good, nice neutral quilt to anybody would like. Guys, women, newlyweds who, you know, want to go with those neutral undertones. This is a great quilt for it. Again, it's called Bricks and Pavers and the pattern is in my book, Simple Quilts for the Modern Home. We are about halfway through the book now, um, going through the patterns and doing video tutorials to go along with them. These are meant to be supplemental. So all of your cutting requirements or your fabric requirements and your cutting instructions, your assembly diagrams, that's all in the book. And so if you enjoyed this, if you wanna make it a great way to say thanks and support us so we can keep doing free videos is to get a book. And you can get that at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you get it from us, I will sign it for you and personalize it as a way to say thank you. And we're planning something really fun for the last quilt in the book, which is the cover quilt. So stay tuned for more on that. All right, until next time, happy quilting.